So, hello there, and welcome back to another Night of the Movies podcast. I'm Spike Knight, and in these podcasts, I like talking all things movies and TV, and whatever I want, whenever I want. And in today's podcast, I'm viewing the new Disney Plus documentary, Music by John Williams, which, of course, all about John Williams. So, let's get into it, shall we? As I've already said, music by John Williams is all about the renowned composer, John Williams, who has done the music for such movies as all nine main Star Wars films, all five Indiana Jones films, the first two Jurassic Park films, the first three Harry Potter movies, as well as the scores for Jaws, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Superman the movie, you know, that classic Superman theme, dun, 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 dun. he came up with that, he did the score to E.T., the extraterrestrial, he did the score to Saving Private Ryan, the first two Home Alone films, um, he did the score to Oliver Stone films such as Born on the Fourth of July and JFK, he did the score to War Horse, he did the score to The Adventures of Tintin, and he's done the score to so much else. He has done the scores to too many movies to mention, quite literally. I mean, he has done so many iconic scores. So many. And not only has he done so many iconic film scores, he's also done a lot of famous TV scores as well, like he did... He came up with the theme for Lost in Space. He came up with the theme for Gillian's Island. You know, he's worked on many famous TV shows. And he's done the theme... He did the theme for the Olympics uh, quite a while ago. And he's done many, many famous themes in his time. Like, I think he did a theme for NBC as well. The point I'm making is John Williams has done the music for so, so many things that you might not even realise. And he's done too many film scores to mention. Genuinely, too many. And I've spoken about this at length on this channel in the past. I'm a very big John Williams fan. Whenever I talk, uh, whenever I review a Star Wars movie or an Indiana Jones film on this channel, I usually dedicate about a like 10 minute section of one of that Star Wars or that Indiana Jones review to talking about John Williams, to talking about the John Williams musical score and how much I adore it because. You know, John Williams did the music to my childhood. I can't tell you how many times I would rewatch, you know, the first six Star Wars movies, and I would rewatch the first three, the first three Indiana Jones films and the first two Jurassic Park films, growing up, and. For the longest time, I didn't realise he did the music to all those films. I think it was around the age of 10 when I finally looked it up. And I was like, oh my god, John Williams did the score to the Star Wars movies. He did the score to the Indiana Jones movies. He did the score to the first two Jurassic Park films. And these films were quite literally my childhood. And so yeah, I didn't realise for the longest time. But John Williams had done the music to my childhood. And ever since realising that, I don't think a day has gone by. When I had when I haven't listened to a piece of John Williams film music, genuinely, it's similar to the Beatles. You know, I'm such a big Beatles fan, and not a day goes by where I don't listen or don't hum a Beatles song. And I feel very similar about John Williams. And actually, in this documentary that I'm viewing in today's podcast, there are. So <laughs> I think J.J. Abrams makes a comparison between. John Williams of the Beatles, which I smiled at <laughs> because they're my two favourite artists. The Beatles and John Williams, yeah. That's pretty much the taste of music that I like. So yeah, not a day goes by where I don't listen to a piece of John Williams music. And John Williams has been working for a very, very long time. Far longer than I actually realised until I watched the documentary. He's been working for decades and decades and decades. And with all that work he has done, I thought there must be a story there. There must be a story to tell. And I was surprised to see that there hasn't been a documentary on his life in the past. At least as far as I'm aware. There's not been a high-profile documentary or a high-profile film about John Williams as far as I can tell. And when this documentary was announced about a year ago now, I think I even covered it on this channel actually back when I was doing live streams. When this documentary was announced about a year ago, I thought, well, it's about time. You know, John Williams deserves to have his story told. 
because again, I think with I I I don't think enough people realise how important and how integral he has been to so many people's lives. There's still people out there who probably don't even realise how ingrained John Williams is John Williams is into pop culture. You know, you just hear the Star Wars theme and you immediately you immediately know what film it's from. Same with Indiana Jones, same with Harry Potter, same with Jurassic Park. You just know Jaws as well. I could mean I could go on and on and on. Superman. You just you hear these themes and you know exactly where they're from. And they're all by the same guy, and I wanted this documentary to be made and to get out there and for people to know his story. And I wanted to know his story because even though I'm a huge fan of John Williams' music, I don't really know much about his life. And I thought, God, there's got to be a story there because he's been working for so, so long. And when I heard that a documentary about his life was in the works, I was very, very excited and counting down the days. And the day came when the documentary was released on Disney Plus. It was released on Disney Plus on November first, the same day I'm, that I'm recording this podcast today. And this morning, I sat down quite early in the morning, not long after I woke up. I went downstairs, stuck on my TV, stuck on Disney Plus, and saw that the John Williams documentary was on there. And I started to play because I have been waiting impatiently to see this film. And this documentary is directed by Laurent Bozero. Apologies if I mispronounced his name. I'll probably have it there below me in the edit. Who also directed the Faye Dunaway documentary, which came out earlier this year. Amongst many Spielberg-adjacent documentaries, such as the one all about Indiana Jones, which came out, I think, last year. It was called something like Timeless Heroes. It was actually quite a good documentary that I don't think enough people saw because of the reception to Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, which was a bit of a mixed reception. Even so, I loved that movie, but, you know, I think with the reception to that film, that documentary didn't get the best reception, although I do think it's a very worthwhile watch if you get the chance and if you have Disney Plus. And he also directed the documentary about the making of such Spielberg movies as The Fablemans, The Post, The West Side Story we make, which Spielberg directed, to name a few. He's done quite a few things with Spielberg in the past, the director of this film. Lauren Bazoo has done quite a few quite a few things with Spielberg in the past. So it's unsurprising to say that Spielberg is attached as a producer on this film. And with Spielberg attached as a producer, that got me further excited because it adds a layer of authenticity to, to the film that perhaps wouldn't have been there if Spielberg wasn't attached as a producer. Like, I didn't even need him to direct it. I mean, it would be great if he directed it, but he's busy doing other jobs. You know, he's working on his next movie. I've been reading up a bit about that, but that's another topic for another day. He's busy doing other jobs, so he didn't direct the film, but he is attached as a producer and he is featured a lot in this film, in talking head interviews, as is John Williams himself, and I don't think John Williams would have done all the talking head interviews and would have probably done the documentary at all if Spielberg wasn't producing it. That's what my gen genuine thoughts were. So, with all that, I was very, very excited to see the documentary and I sat down to watch it this morning. And after finishing the documentary earlier today, hear my thoughts on it. Hear my thoughts on music by John Williams. Honestly, I absolutely loved it. Now, sure, you can say I'm biased because I'm a big, 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 big John Williams fan. And any topic about Spielberg, I'm automatically, I'm automatically going to have a soft spot for because Spielberg is one of my favourite filmmakers of all time. And Spielberg and John Williams have worked together too many times to count. So sure, I may have some bias towards a documentary, and I may have gone, I may have gone in knowing I was going to love it already, but I didn't think I would love it the same way I did, and I think this works as a documentary, as a solid, as a very good documentary, because it does the things you want a documentary to do. You know, it entertains you, it informs you, and it tells you about a subject matter or a person that you perhaps didn't know anything or you didn't know that much about. You know, that's what I feel about the, 
best documentary to do. Whenever I watch a documentary and I don't really know much about the subject matter, I want to be informed. I want to come away from the documentary after going, actually now I know a lot more about that subject matter or that person. And that's how I felt, you know, after finishing this John Williams documentary. I came away and I was like, yeah, now I know a lot more about John Williams as a person rather than just his film music. You know, in this documentary, I learned a lot more about his personal life, which I really didn't know anything about and the struggles he faced. And I'm not going to get into what the struggles are because I think it explores... This documentary explores in a way where it's... It's just something you have to watch, you know? This documentary, it talks about the struggles John Williams faced in his personal life, which I had no clue about, and made me admire him even more so, which I didn't know was possible. Also, it talked about his early career in jazz, in which he was known as Johnny Towner Williams. That's what his name was when he was a jazz artist. And I didn't know any... Well, I knew he was a jazz musician. I knew that's where... Well, I knew he made jazz music. I knew that's where he got his start. But I didn't really know much about his early career. And this documentary explores it in a way that I, was, I felt was satisfying. Also, the documentary talks about John Williams' experience going into different orchestras and how they didn't appreciate him at first because they didn't have an appreciation for film music. You know, the first time in this documentary he talks about the first time John Williams went to the Boston Pops Orchestra, which he records a lot of music with nowadays, or that he's recorded a lot of music with over however many years. And at first he didn't like him because he was a film music composer. They knew him as a film music composer. And back when he first went to this orchestra, they were a bit sniffy about film music. And I found that fascinating. And also, <laughs> as a huge Spielberg fan and as a huge Star Wars fan, I mean, just look behind me, look at the t-shirt I'm wearing this podcast today. You know, as a huge Spielberg fan and as a huge Star Wars fan, I loved, 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 loved all the exploration into John Williams making the music for the first Star Wars film, for Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, which was originally just titled Star Wars. I loved seeing him come up with the music for Jaws and to see Spielberg and John Williams together in interviews specifically made for this documentary talk about the experience they had when they first, when John Williams first played the Jaws theme to Spielberg on piano and Spielberg's reaction. I loved seeing that. I loved seeing all the exploration into John Williams coming up with the theme for Close Encounters of the Third Kind. You know, dun, 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 bom, bom. That iconic, those iconic five notes which... <laughs> I just, oh, genius. And I love seeing all the exploration into John Williams coming up with all these different themes for all these classic movies, which are shown in all this archival footage from Spielberg's home home videos, which was also fascinating. Seeing all this footage, which I'm, guess, I'm guessing is not out there already, seeing all of this archival footage of John Williams composing and conducting and working on the scores for all these classics like E.T., Star Wars, um, Saving Private Ryan, there's a bit of him doing the score for that in there. And there's all this archival footage which I was just completely in awe of. I was watching this documentary with the biggest grin on my face and one of the reasons I was, one of the other reasons I was watching this documentary with the biggest grin on my face was because of the talking head interviews. Not only do you have these really interesting and compelling and engaging interviews from the man himself, John Williams himself, talking about his life in quite a candid fashion, you also get interviews from Spielberg himself, which is great because obviously, like what he said, Spielberg and Williams work together so many times. You get interviews from George Lucas and you get interviews from the likes of J.J. Abrams, Ron Howard, um, and you get interviews from other composers who admire John Williams, like Alan Silvestri, who's done so many classic musical scores. You know, he He's a guy who came up with the Back to the Future theme, which is so iconic, get 
he talks about how much he admires John Williams. You get uh, interviews from Thomas Newman and David Newman, who I'm guessing are part of the same family because the Newman family are all composers. You know, Alfred Newman came up with the 20th Century Fox fanfare, and uh, Randy Newman does the music for the Toy Story films. And Thomas Newman and David David Newman, who I'm guessing are both in the Newman family, they. Uh, they're in this documentary and they're talking about how much they admire John Williams and then you also get interviews from other artists who I don't think have worked with John Williams in the past but also really really admire him like Chris Martin from Coldplay he talks he talks about his personal association to John Williams which I thought was fascinating and I'm not really a Coldplay fan nothing against him I'm just I only really like about five of their songs. Then Seth MacFarlane, who's probably best known for creating Family Guy, but has done some music in the past. I think he's done a couple of jazz albums here and there. Must admit, I'm not too clued up on that, but you get the point I'm making. Seth MacFarlane has done some music here and there in his time. He talks about his love of John Williams' music, his love of John Williams' jazz music, and his love of John Williams' orchestral music. And then you also get interviews from people who just really love him, like Keihu Kwan pop pops up in there, you know, Kei Kwan, who played Short Round in Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom, and he talks about how much he loved John Williams' music for that film, and all these different and interesting creative people, people who have literally worked with John Williams, who have played music with him in concerts, all these people who just absolutely love him, and it's, oh, it was such a joyful and fascinating watch, because I didn't know that much about John Williams' life before watching this documentary and I feel like I know so much more now. As for criticisms, I will say the documentary is more of a celebration of his life than anything else and people perhaps wanting to see otherwise will be disappointed by this documentary. Although I don't understand what you would want to see otherwise. I mean, the documentary doesn't really cover his critics. The people who don't like his work. And by the way, if you don't like his work, I, what the hell is wrong with you? But, you know, <laughs> all music is subjective. You know, there's people out there nowadays who think it's cool to say that the Beatles are overrated. Honestly, every time somebody says that, I want to slap them over the head with a wet fish. But it does happen. And, you know, if there was a modern day Beatles documentary made talking about their impact today, I'd want to see such Beatles documentary to explore why you know certain people think that the Beatles are, that the Beatles are overrated and I dare say there are people out there I haven't met them but I dare say there are people out there who don't like John Williams music who think it's overrated or think his music talent sounds too similar you're wrong you just <laughs> I'm sorry but it's objectively wrong but there are people out there who are probably like that and I would have liked this documentary to explore that and just to show that, yes, he does have his critics, but this is how he fights back against them. And the documentary didn't really do that. It is more of a celebration of his life than anything else. And my other small criticism, and this is only a small criticism, this is not a big criticism, but my other small criticism is it doesn't really cover John Williams' work post the year 2000 too much. It does explore it. You know, because he did the music for the High Potter films, and there's a section of this documentary which explores the music for the High Potter movies, and that was all post the year 2000. And it explores the music that he did for Catch Me If You Can, which came out in 2002, and the music he did for the Star Wars prequels and the Star and Star Wars: The Force Awakens, which came out in 2015. You know, it does explore some of his work post the year 2000, post uh, the turn of the Millennium. But it doesn't go into great detail. It's more about his classic work. And I would have liked to see more of an explanation into his work post-2000. Because there is so much great work he did post-2000, which I don't think enough people talk about. And this documentary didn't cover that in great detail, and I would have liked it to. But those are my only things with this documentary. Um, I mean, the whole thing with it being a celebration of his life, that's not really a criticism. I'm just kind of warning people. If you're expecting something else, you're not going to get that. And my only two criticisms... My only two criticisms really are I would have liked to, to talk about his critics more because everybody has a critics. Everybody does. Especially someone who's, you know, who's been around as long as John Williams. And I would have liked it to explore his work post the Millennium as as well. 
And I will also say, those are my only two criticisms, and I will also say that for anybody who's not a fan of John Williams' music or not interested to hear about his music making or not really interested in uh, Spielberg in general, you probably won't be too interested in this documentary. It's probably not going to be for you. But personally, I loved it. I just absolutely loved it because I have always loved John Williams music every single time I listen to it I'm always fascinated by it and again I listen to his music daily and that's not an exaggeration literally before doing this podcast today I was listening to the opening theme from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade you know to pump me up for this review today because his music means so much to me and just you know, hearing him talk about doing the music and hearing other people talk about his music, talk about the impact of his music, how he changes a film and he changes a film for the better, how he transforms uh, a film into something that it wasn't before, how the marriage between John Williams' music and Spielberg's directing works so well and just... Seeing how John Williams makes his music, like he talks about how he doesn't use electronic devices or doesn't really use it that much, so he, he has to write all his music down by hand. You know, he doesn't use electronics like other uh, composers nowadays may do if they're composing a piece of music. John Williams does it all by hand, and hearing him talk about that it sounds much easier than it actually is. And he, hearing him talk about that, hearing him talk about how much time he puts into his music, is like, I mean, I just found it completely and utterly absorbing. I, I couldn't get enough of it, genuinely. The documentary is only about an hour, 45 minutes, and I thought it flew by. It went by just like that. Oh, I just thought it was such a joy to watch. And it's out there, and I'm so glad it's out there. Thank God this documentary exists, because it deserves to exist. John Williams' story deserves to be told, and I do think this film has done his story justice. Now, now all we need is a John Williams biopic. I do reckon one will come out, but uh, it won't be probably in his lifetime, unfortunately. That's sad to think about. But uh, for now, I think this is good enough. I think John Williams' story is told in a very satisfying and worthwhile way in this documentary that does what you want a good and a very good documentary that to do. It entertains you, it informs you, you learn about this person's story that you might not know anything about and it makes you smile and it truly just it engages you and keeps you engaged in a way that Oh, just worked for me on that in a way that just worked for me in the ways I wanted it to, you know? And so all in all, I'm going to say that music by John Williams. Yeah. I'm gonna give it an eight point five out of ten. I'm not gonna give it a nine out of ten just because again I do have some small nitpicks with this documentary. I'm close to giving it a nine out of ten actually. No, I'm not gonna give it a nine out of ten. It's not a nine out of ten. But I'm so happy I'm giving it that 8.5 out of 10 because I do think it's just... Oh, if you're a fan of John Williams and you didn't even know it, check out this documentary. If you had any interest in John Williams or Steven Spielberg, check out this documentary as well. Just check out this documentary. It's on Disney+. Plus and it's so, so good. And one last thing. I love the name of this documentary because I have a bunch of John Williams CDs back there. I've actually got one down here, though it doesn't say it on here, but on almost all of the John Williams CDs that I've got, again, not on this one, this is of a compilation, but on all the John Williams CDs I've got, it says music by John Williams, you know? <laughs> <laughs> on all the scores and so to name the documentary music by John Williams it doesn't sound that good on the surface but if you're a fan of John Williams music you understand why it's so good once I'm gonna get a CD and show you here I've got the soundtrack to Star Wars the Rise of Skywalker and it says music by John Williams so to give this documentary that title doesn't sound like a big thing and to be honest it's not a big thing but to call it that 
I just think is like the cherry on the ice on top of the cake. You know what I mean? I'm gonna round things up by saying I loved this documentary. I found it fascinating and I, <laughs> I sat there with a grin on my face the entire time. I loved all the archival footage we get to see of John Williams doing all of his scores. I love how we get this exploration into the, all the stuff he does outside of his of his film scoring as well. I love how he talks about movies, I love how everybody talks about him, and I just loved how much we got to learn about him in this documentary, all this stuff about his personal life, which I didn't really know anything about. Plus, I just, ah, oh, I think it's an absolute joy to watch, you know? Especially as a big fan of John Williams' music, which, of course, I am. And so, all in all, as I've already said, and as I'm going to say once more in this podcast today, music by John Williams is an 8.5 out of 10 for me. Anyway guys, that's it for today's podcast. If you have seen music by John Williams, please let me know your thoughts on it in the comments section below. And as always, thank you for watching or listening to this podcast. And if you haven't yet, please do click down below and like and subscribe on this podcast. I look forward to many more podcasts coming very, very soon on this channel. Somehow I've made it through this podcast today because I'm not feeling well. I'm very, very dizzy right now and I feel whacked out. So this, if this review didn't work as well as helped if i didn't make sense in a couple of parts i do apologize i'm just i'm not very well right now but hopefully you enjoyed this podcast and thank you so much for watching as i've already said and i suppose this is it so i will see you guys again soon but bye for now bye